Tools of Him Out podcast, reading from the book. Anyway, but North by Nick Green. Green. Chapter One: Story of my fucking life. Just don't just sit there like a tampon floating in a piss-filled public pool. Move! A voice crackled over a tiny earpiece in Rob North's ear, even though a full yell, the sound was barely audible. A voice belonged to Jeff Higgins, field officer, arsehole, and children air. Yeah, yeah, Rob whispered in the branded head microphone strapped around his throat. He could pick up the smallest noise. This is Rob Noel from the hostage recovery. I'm moving in. Rob peered down where he was perched outside, standing in the ceiling air vent. Although he was lean and cut, Rob was a pretty large guy on the even six foot tall. This old building was a wide vents, but it was still a tight fit. Sweat dripped down his forehead. He pushed his short, dusty brown hair to the side. It was a hot day. There's no power in the building. Rob looked down the long, dusty hallway. A masked guard walked away from him. He pulled out the long knife on his hip. He slightly opened the vent and dropped to the floor. Rob timed his movements to land with the man's footfalls. He sloughly walked right up behind the guard. Rob reached out, put one hand over the man's mouth, pulling him back, and ran the knife across his throat. The man slumped down into his arm. The rob slid the knife back into its safe. He used both hands to lay, quietly lay the man down on the ground. That was easy, almost too easy. He raced to the end of the hallway, peered around. His breath caught. This is it. He leaned against the wall. Two, three guards, two seated, one standing. Target is in the room. Bound, a bound floor into the floor. I'm going in, he whispered. Rob pulled the handgun from the poster. Of his, at his side, his raised, his left hands were sweaty. He raised the gun and took a deep breath, counting to four to calm his nerves. He didn't jump around the corner. Instead, he leaned out only so far enough to take aim, using the wall for cover and to stabilize himself, just like I'd been trained. He fired once at the man standing. He would be the quickest to react. Even as the man hit the floor, Rob fired twice more at the two seated guards. One fell to the ground. The other slumped in his chair. Rob immediately stepped into the room. He fired twice at each of the bodies. Double tap. Got to make sure they'd stay down. He hosted his gun. The room is secure. Rob looked at the bound body of the floor. Male, late twenties. He matched the picture that Rob had, given, had been given and looked at him in good health. Let's hope he can walk. He tied at the feet and the hands. Rob pulled out a horny knife. Opened it up and cut the rope at his feet, feet first, and then his hands. As Rob folded up the knife, the man ripped off the blindfold and punched Rob squarely on the jaw. Rob fell to the floor and the hostage fled. The seed hostage took off at a sprint down the hallway. Shit! Rob yelled. He picked himself off the ground and ran in pursuit. I knew this was too easy. The hostage ran down the hall. He turned a corner and flew through a door marked as exit. Bob was close behind. He followed through the door and pulled stairway. Stairwell, did he go up or down? Bob listened for a moment. He heard footsteps pounding on the stairs and would have gone down, but then it sounded like up. He listened for one more second. That man was going up, getting away. Up, it is. Bob took off to the sprint up the stairs. An intense cardigan conditioning helped him with those mad sprints, but his side burned as he hit. Landing on the floor above, you still hear, hear the pounding of feet on the stairs. 
So he continued to sprint up. He sprinted up. Halfway up the next flight, the pounding stopped. Rob bounded on up to the remaining stairs of the stairwell. Door slammed shut. He ripped it open and let through a man in wrinkle polo khakis. Stood with a gun shaped object. He pulled the trigger and Rob jolt, left felt a jolt. His body convulsed. He went to the ground. Taser! From the ground, Rob heard a siren go off. A red light blinked on the ceiling above. A man smiled and walked over to Rob. He stretched out a hand. Rob took it. A man helped him up. Damn it, Rob! This training simulation is over. You failed, the man said. Rob's teeth are still sizzling for electric shock. Failed? Rob blinked. His voice sounded shrill to his ears. I did everything I was supposed to do until you showed up. Everything you said, get the hostage. All you had to do was throw the body over the shoulder and walk out. What the hell is the point of all that? Condition, if you're too lazy to carry a fucking body. Some perking face belonged to Je- Jeff Higgins. Field officer, arsehole, short in air. I don't think the hostage was going to run, Rob said. You don't think at all. Hostages can, can be irrational. They might be a joy too, to be drugged. Or maybe just a criminal bastard that we want in our custody. Rob brushed off his pants. Shouldn't that, shouldn't have that free mission? And this report include that bit of evidence? Of the information? Analysis make mistakes. Intelligence is complete. You of all guys should know that. Jeff put his hands on his hips. No, we shouldn't. My reports are always very thorough. The guys in the field just never bother reading them. Things are different in the field, Rob grunted. That was the taser really necessary? Was the taser really necessary? Hell yes, it was. You shithead enough to keep up with the training. I want to make sure that you feel get to feel it. Rob looked Jeff in the eye. Why do you hate me? I don't hate you, Rob. You want a good analyst? You're a damn good analyst. I want to make sure you stay that way. Hell, I'll probably save your life. Why are you such a hard on to be a field agent? It's a long time dream. Look around this place. Why do you think anyone signs up to work for the CIA? I'm not the only guy sitting behind the desk who wants something different. I just have to be trying to make the hardest to make that change. Jeff patted Bob on the back. I can appreciate that. I respect your resolve. But you've got to resolve the fact that, you're, that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you never get put in the field. Rob pushed up, up Jeff's arms and why? I tried hard, I'm char- I qualified. Why don't you give me, why won't you give me a chance? You're dis dis jockey. That's where you belong. I don't need some genuine chaser putting on my putting my guys at risk. Rob shook his head, son of a story of my fucking life. How many times have you been divorced? Lee Collins asked. She hadn't meant to say that question loud. Lee turned from the window off its window. She loved that window. The only thing that broke the monotony was a small grey room, even if the view was just a parking lot. She sat behind a desk, everything on the st- that it stacked neatly into its place. The entire ho- office was organised. She pushed her short brown hair between her, her, her ear and smiled. She wore a dark grey business suit with thin black glasses perched low on her nose. She reached across her desk and straightened the black card. It read, Assistant Director, Field Operations, Lee, light the fixate on the remainder of the, that remainder of her position. Jeff Higgins sat across from her. His, his, his sandy hair was now more grey than brown. He eyed his attire, a late green page of polo shirt, painted khakis, faintly wrinkled like a head pulled out of the clothes chamber. Lee couldn't remember Jeff wearing anything neatly pressed. She wondered if he ever knew what, how to use an iron. Maybe he'd been neat and when he'd been married to his first wife. She didn't know what, didn't know him. She didn't know how, him back then. For four, Jeff fixed it in his seat. That's all we have. I have. All we ever have to be. I won't marry again. Field work on can be tough in a marriage. Lee watched him closely. It can be. Jeff. Jeff. Lips parted from small. Hell, everything is tough for marriage. Sharing two faces is tough for marriage. Marriage is tough for marriage. But affairs, they're probably the worst. You're not that. That's not what you told me when we were younger. Lee tossed her hair in the side and locked up. Lawyer Jeff, back then, you say 
that an affair was just a symptom of marriage already broken. Do you remember that? Are you changing your mind in that old age? 44 isn't that old, but I do know I never had a successful marriage. The best relationships I've ever had were deficited, professional. Lee smiled and kept her eyes locked on him. Is that what you call it? consider us professionals? Jeff died, lowered, spies had led a bad f- relationship. Or at least they... Oh, do you think... Oh, that's what I think Ian Fleming was trying to tell us with those 12 James Bond movie novels. Lee gave a small laugh. You've got to remind me a little bit of the American Sean Connery. She left a small fade from her face. This is no business bothers me. Lee carefully clasped her hands. Jeff shrugged. Rob North is a great analyst. He's shifted in his chair again. He's dedicated, hard working. He reminds me of myself. On paper, he makes a perfect candidate for a field agent. That's what the problem. Why haven't you put him in the field? He's got he's got zero military experience. No law enforcement experience either. What makes him risky? Wait a second, second. He's been in this for CIA for six years. That's experience. Lee carefully put her hands in front of her on the desk. Why would you consider an outside experience better than experience earned in the house? We've never been. You've never been in shit. Lee said. Lee raised an eyebrow. Seriously? Jeff cleared his throat. His throat, his throat. It's his throat. Never faced danger firsthand. He's never been in the line of fire. Jeff shrugged his shoulders. That's just... Like I said, he's never been in the shit. Lee leaned back in her chair and crossed her arms. Where were you... Neither was that... Any of you, uh, you other rookies when we put up in the field. He's got a black belt in taekwondo and trained in half a dozen other martial arts. He's telling you every... Every field work course we've offered him. I don't want to babysit this, sorry, ass. Jeff rose, rose. He took a breath before continuing. That's all. If you respect my opinion, you'll leave it at that. I respect your opinion, but afraid not going to cut it. Lee sighed and took off her glasses. He complained that you tasted him. Is that true? Jeff threw his hands of his hands, has given him a far time. The training was too easy. Lee stared back at him. Am, am I in trouble here? Lee, Mark, Jeff asked. No matter of trouble, Jeff said. I just wondered, you you knew... The training was too easy. Lee stared back at him. Am I in trouble here? Jeff asked. No, no trouble, he said. Just wondering, you know, Father Thomas Noel, didn't you? Yeah, I knew him. What did you think of him? Jeff chewed his lip. Like I'm the one to talk about particular transgressions. Jeff rubbed a stubble on his chin before continuing. What happened to his parents was a travesty. It's a fact that he came out as normal as Even came out of trouble as not came out as normal did. He had doubt what had become the same work going like that. Are you worried about his mental state? Lee asked. No, but I feel what it takes a toll. Hasn't he already been through enough? Lee let her glasses down on the desk and leaned on it. Do you really think he's soft? Jeff shook his hand. Lee pushed up with the other her questions. As you, your opinion about. came out as normal as he did. Hell, I doubt I've ever came out like that same growing up like that. Are you worried about his mental state? Lee says, asked. No, but Phil would took the toll. Hasn't he already been through enough? Lee set her glasses down on the desk and leaned on it. Leaned in. Do you really think he's soft? Jeff shook his hands. Lee pushed on with the questions. Is your objection about, uh, your, about your opinion of him? Or does it have more to do with your, what happened to his father? 
just sat up and slammed his hand down on the desk. Damn it, you asked my opinion, I gave it. He paused and took a deep breath, leaning back in the chair. Sorry, Lee, the thing is, I knew his mother. Too, Laura was a good woman. I'm sorry, I didn't, I wasn't aware. I tried to be as objective as I can. You make the call. You want him in the field, hang him out there and see how he pans it, how it pans out. Lee picked up the glasses, put it back on. It's like you said, on paper he's the perfect candidate. He wouldn't have a big pool, a big enough pool of candidates to choose from that. We could get good opportunities like this to pass by, but your hesitation makes me worry. Get him another psych evaluation, then I'll make a decision. You've been listening to the Holesley Martin podcast show, reading from the book. Anyway, but North by Nick Gregg. Chapter One The Story of My Fucking Life. <laughs>